right guys, welcome back to the channel. We took a little bit of time off, but we are back at it again. And with full self-driving coming imminently, effectively two weeks, uh, we wanted to just create some baseline drives or reference drives to understand how much of an evolution, how much of an increase in capability the new full self-driving software is going to be. Now I say full self-driving software because it's effectively new software, vision-based, vision-only software uh, enhancements that allow the steering wheel to work in a certain way, to allow the car to operate in a certain way, specifically adding the city streets component to the full self-driving. So a more feature-rich full self-driving feature set and capabilities for our cars. Okay, so these, these features are coming and they're gonna allow us to be able to do effectively what you see maybe online with full self-driving beta, but do that in a, in, a, in a broader fashion with more people in the US getting access to it and potentially some other people abroad, maybe Canada, uh, UK, I think is gonna take a little bit more time. All right, so we wanna just do a couple of baseline drives that we can reproduce once we have this new software. And again, just see the efficiencies gained, see how much has been enhanced and see what the true value of full self-driving is based on that. All right, so if you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing. Otherwise, let's get into it. All right, so now when we talk about this baseline drive, we think about scenarios where full self-driving is actually valuable. Um, two main scenarios come to mind. One is which you're very tired, maybe it's late, maybe you are somehow impaired, but not too impaired to drive, but you just don't feel right to drive. And you wanna be able to drive somewhere, you wanna be able to get from point A to point B um, and allow your car to do a lot of the heavy lifting right now. Right now, autopilot and full self-driving is set up to do that, primarily on the highways, right? And the new component of this is gonna be the ability to do it on city streets. So obviously there's gonna be some city street components to this that we're not gonna be able to experience right now because we don't have that software in this particular car. But when we get that new software, we'll be able to add that city street component of it and see how very valuable it is. So again, the one scenario I'm thinking of right now is just, hey, how do I get home? Can I get home from being somewhere else? Right now I'm at a supercharger and can the car take me home and do a lot of the heavy lifting? Again, I'm not too tired, I'm not drunk or gonna pass out, but maybe I'm somehow impaired. And that's one scenario. The other scenario we'll talk about in another video and we'll experiment what that looks like as well. So here we go, we're gonna take off now, put it in gear. So obviously I'm going to make note of when we're going to disengage. Obviously we're not even engaged right now because you really can't engage this particular version of autopilot and full self-driving right now because again, it's not enabled for city streets and making these you know 90 degree turns, stopping at stop signs, and then proceeding on again, making a turn. You can go straight through, but it can't make that turn just yet. turn here onto a little bit of a highway road um, and then we can actually activate right here but I do want to be mindful of potholes that's one thing even full self-driving is not capable of so I'm going to activate right now navigate on autopilot is not active so that means that the car is not going to take this ramp but I will so I'll disengage take the ramp and again this is something that the new software will be able to enable but I'll activate in mid-ramp here. I'll have my hand on the wheel just like this, but as you see with the Navigate and Autopilot, the blue solid line right here, that means that that's activated. Now it can take on-ramps and, and interchanges and do automatic lane changes by itself. And this is what's active right now, which you get with the current full self-driving suite as of the upload of this particular video. It's active, pretty solid, pretty smooth. Speed limit, I'll go to my offset, which I believe is five over, uh, just to be safe. Again, cars are passing, I have the cameras up as well, so you can see that. Let's see if it stays in this lane or if it makes a different lane change. I will say that navigating autopilot, the highway version of this is pretty phenomenal. It takes a lot of that heavy lifting away, but again, we're experimenting with this scenario. I'm tired, I'm impaired. I really can't make this drive on my own. My feet are off the pedals. Uh, my hand is just on the wheel, ready to take over as instructed by the guidance of Tesla on how to use this system. It is a driver assistance system, not a fully autonomous system, even with full self-driving. And I'm just relaxed. I'm relaxed, I'm able to drive, I'm able to go. No problem. A 
I'll also fast forward past the sort of boring parts so you don't have to uh, sit around for that. Automatic lane change acknowledged. It's changing lanes automatically. Now I'm in the sort of the center lane. My settings are for this particular uh, navigator autopilot, Mad Max mode. Um, do not require exit on the passing lane or the exit lane. And everything else is just my standard offsets for speed. Going over interesting drawbridge. It does recognize the lights on the drawbridge, which is pretty cool, but doesn't interact with them the way that it would on a city street by saying, you know, sort of stop and go. Interesting to see what would happen if the drawbridge was up and the lights were red. But right now, the, the green light doesn't require additional sort of confirmation to go through. So that's pretty cool. Automatic lane change happening now. I'll take my hands off once I confirm just to show you that it is actually auto lane changing. I know some people are skeptical in the comments about what it's doing. I'm going to bump up a little faster just because the traffic behind me is sort of catching up to me and trying to pile up on me. And the speed limit is going to change up here anyway. Again, just to give you an example and show you that it's actually driving on its own. Again, I have to oversee it, but it's still operating on its own. So you become more of an operator versus a driver. Turning, auto lane change in the blind spot of this car to the left of me. Still does a good job of handling that. Again, highway, phenomenal regular autopilot, you know, enhanced autopilot, if you will, for the older feature set that it was called. Uh, and then the full self-driving currently in its current form with just the majority of the autopilot on highway features is, uh, is rock solid and, and very valuable. Not necessarily 10,000 US dollars valuable, but it's very valuable nonetheless uh, in terms of being able to, to, to alleviate you of the stress of long monotonous drives on the highway. So since the speed limit's gone up, I'm gonna go up, you know, just to be 10 over. Cars seem to be passing me. Give it the acknowledgement for the auto lane change. Let it do its thing. Auto lane changing right here. renders the trucks accurately here and there. That's pretty cool. All the other surrounding cars, again, not a lot of traffic today. I don't expect any. Uh, so I thought this was a good opportunity to be able to do this particular run. Uh, just, hey, take me home. Take me to where I need to be. And if you are new to Tesla, you don't know if you have the navigation option on the map. Um, I have the cameras up now, but the navigation option, if you just swipe, if you set home in your car, first and foremost, a home location, you can just swipe down when you're not home. It'll take you home. So imagine just getting in the car. I'm somehow impaired or tired, but not so much that I need to, you know, an ambulance or someone to take me home. Um, I can drive myself, but I would prefer not to swipe down, get in the car and effectively let it take you all the way home. Give me a chime. I have both the chime and the vibration for the auto lane change. Uh, in terms of requiring confirmation. Technically, it says do not require confirmation, but it technically does uh, require you to have your force feedback on the wheel before it makes that lane change, just to be as safe as possible. Now, it's going to take this exit lane up here, and here's where we're going to start to disengage. Now, these lane uh, exit lanes are pretty close to the edge. Let's see how aggressive it is. 
pretty aggressive, pretty fast. As you see, it gets really close to the line. It's always done that since it's, it's come out and uh, it's been pretty interesting. Now it's gonna disengage, navigate on autopilot and go back to the two sot lines on the edge, which is standard autopilot, which doesn't do a lot of automatic uh, lane changing and things of that nature, but it will take this bend. And then once I get off of this, it'll ask me to confirm to continue and get through this light. So I'm gonna use the accelerator to confirm to go through this light. And now we're continuing our journey on autopilot. I'm not gonna use my feet here. There are some potholes up here. I'm gonna be mindful of that because I do have my lovely 21 inch wheels on. Don't want to mess those up. Where we're going, coming up to a light. Should stop and it should also keep me in the right lane, not this turning lane, which is pretty cool. Asking me for confirmation. I'll use a stalk this time. Two different ways you can confirm at the moment with the stalk and with your accelerator pedal. And for this particular leg, um, I will just take my hand off just so you can see the level of automation and again in an assistance form on local roads right now again as it's going to compare to a full self-driving which is called city streets that's the component that's missing right now city streets which is that local road component making sharp turns being able to navigate these intersections uh, with more detail and more accuracy and more capability than it currently does but i just want to show you that it's actually doing its thing on local roads so i will keep my hands to the side at the ready and just uh, you know, do it this way, just so you can see that the car is doing its own thing. Showing all the lights accurately, the turning light here uh, typically is an arrow. Right now it's just solid green, but it does acknowledge that that's the turning lane and that's not the lane that I'm in. So it's not gonna give me the chime to continue. But I think I've already confirmed. So when this light turns green, I should be able to go. I'm going, crosses through pretty well. Nervous about these wheels. Sorry about that, but I'll keep it here because I, I know this particular stretch. It's going to ask me because I'm not following another car. It's going to ask me to confirm. I've confirmed again. And there's going to be a bit of a merge up here. Hopefully nothing crazy happens. There's a car to the left of me. As you see, it's encroaching. It's not going to handle this well, so I'm going to take over. It's not going to handle that well. So that's looking looking forward to that being adjusted in the update um, for the car to be able to handle that. Get into the right lane, start to slow down, signal for that particular type of merge. It's a unique case. It's not a. It's maybe more of an edge case than anything else, but uh, definitely something that it needs to be able to handle. So right now I can't handle that. So you know, thumbs down for the current iteration of autopilot handling that scenario. Because I'm on local roads, it also limits me to five miles an hour over as the maximum I can go for safety reasons, which makes sense. And it will automatically adjust that based on the speed limits that I see on, on the road. On the highway, you have the ability and autonomy to go as fast as you'd like up to a certain point, 90 miles an hour, 95 miles an hour. And then after that, autopilot does not work. But on city streets, local roads, um, it limits you to five miles an hour over and also, again, adjust the speed limit based on what the limit, the posted limit is. There is a bit of a pothole up here. I'm going to pull a little bit. It's going to hit it just. All right, whatever. <laughs> all right, so now to get home, I'm going to have to make this left turn at this light. Let's see if it at least gets me to the right lane, to the left lane, I should say. It's asking me to apply a little bit of pressure. It's not really putting me in the right, in the correct lane, I should say, but let's see. Applying some more pressure. Well, there we go. And now I need to make this left turn. And here's where I'm gonna need to disengage because again, current iteration doesn't make these types of turns. So I will disengage once the light turns. I'll re-engage and then see what happens. Okay, this, this road is not divided and is not letting me engage autopilot right now. 
Okay, so it's trying to extrapolate where the lane line is, as you see the gray lines there. However, because it's not divided, autopilot does not want to work right now. Now, I understand that the full self-driving may do that. Uh, it may. Um, typically, when they have a, a early release build or a beta build that they're testing, they give it more capability. But in the final version, they may limit that. So full self-driving beta right now can actually navigate this road being undivided. But the current iteration, the production version might not be able to do that. So right now, it's pretty much as far as I can go. So it's gotten me that far. I can't go any further on autopilot because these roads are undivided. But basically, this is, you know, the capability that it has right now, which is pretty good. So not quite fully all the way home, but it gets me pretty close. I can take care of the rest from here up to that light effectively uh, in that particular merge scenario. All right, so we'll, we'll pass home. I don't need everybody looking at our house, but uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments. How did it do? Uh, how do you like your current iteration? If you're on the fence about getting full self-driving, do you think it's worth it? And if you've not gotten a Tesla at all, do you feel that this capability is valuable for you? Do you think this is something that you would want to get, want to have in your car uh, to be able to assist you and aid you? We'll do another video, uh, another baseline, another reference video shortly. Until the next time, enjoy your day. Enjoy your Tesla.